Yes, because there's no place. You don't really know. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Good evening, Father. How are you doing tonight? Very fine. And so the Paschal Triduum begins. And tonight we celebrate the institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the priesthood, and the wonder in service of Christian charity. We pray for the repose of the soul of Mike Coles, and we give thanks to God for the life of Rachel Evans, who marks the anniversary of her birth. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. That we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church, a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month is to be the first of all levers for you, the first month of your, your, your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, on the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each fa family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbor, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must say, take into account what each can eat and decide in the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it to the 14th day of the month, when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two, on the door, two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honor of the Lord. That night I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm will be sung. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The How can I replay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. Thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. 
In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory It was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from table, removed his outer garment and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At a moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Jesus Christ. Christ. There was a news report in early December of 1912 in New York about a church, a St. Philip Neri church, which caught fire. There was fire. And the fire services were called. 
and the church was engulfed in smoke. And naturally, there was a stampede and people running away. Next to the church was a presbytery where the priests lived. And so once the priests in there knew what was happening, they came out. And to the amazement, the shock of everyone, these two priests ran into the church that was on fire. And everyone thought, what madness would drive them into such a blazing furnace? What madness? After a while, they came out. Of course, smoke all over. And they came out alive. And the firemen ran to them. I was wondering what was wrong with them. What seemed so unnatural. And they came out carrying something. And to the amazement of these firemen, they thought what they were carrying was bread. How could these men risk their life to take bread out of the church? But was it bread? It was the body of Christ, the Eucharist. And that real story of two priests who risked their lives in order to preserve the Eucharist speaks to us in a most profound way about what we believe in the Eucharist. The sacrament of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. It is the one thing that defines us as Catholics. As St. John Paul II would say, take the Eucharist away, there is no church. The Eucharist makes the church. It is the one sacrament, in the words of the great Dominican Saint Thomas Aquinas, the most august sacrament, the sacrament of sacraments. Why would the Lord give himself to us in this sacrament? The sacrament that speaks of the real presence. It speaks of the sacrifice of Christ and also of the eternal banquet, the real presence. It's a sacrifice. It's a banquet. When we look at the story in John chapter 6, the disciples were following Jesus. He had performed the miracles. And the Lord turned to them and said, I am the bread of life. That unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. What a shock. And it seemed nauseating to a Jew. Because blood was sacred. They were not cannibals. How would this man give them his flesh? And if they thought he spoke in figures of speech, metaphorically, so to say, the Lord doubled down. He said, Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. For my flesh is real food and my blood real drink. And some stopped following him. They had enjoyed his miracles, his wide teachings. But the Lord was bringing something new. The, the banquet. And if you look at the story of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, Look at Matthew chapter 26, from verse 26 to 28. They were celebrating the Passover. And to the disciples, it seemed it was a usual Passover. The traditional Passover. But the Lord brought something new, something radical. They expected him to share the bread with them. But then he said, this is my body. How could he say this? What a surprise factor, your body? And when he brought wine, wine for entertainment, he said something altogether new to their amazement. This is my blood which will be shed for you. He did something radical, something new, a new beginning. For a long time, the Lord had prepared the world for that moment. For that moment. When we look at the Old Testament, the sense of the sacrifice. In Exodus chapter 24, when the Lord established his covenant with his people, 
it was ratified with the blood of animals. The blood of animals. And the sacrifice, the basis of the priesthood in the Old Testament. Every year the high priest had to offer sacrifice, first for his own sins and the sins of the people. But that sacrifice became imperfect. We see in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4, he said, The blood of animals was incapable of taking sins away. So the first covenant became imperfect. St. Paul tells us when you look at his first letter to the Corinthians chapter 13 verse 10, he says, When something which is perfect arrives, the imperfect gives way. So the old covenant was imperfect. Why? Because it was incapable of redeeming the human race. And so the Lord promised a new covenant. We see the prophet Jeremiah in the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. In the 31st verse, the Lord says, I will make a new covenant with my people, not the old covenant, a new one. If the old was all right, there will be no need for a new one. And that new covenant was fulfilled when the Lord had the Lord's Supper. He said, this is the blood of the covenant, the new covenant. So we see the Lord gives us. Why would God allow us to share in his life? Through the sacrifice of the cross, he redeemed the human race. And we know at the end of our own journey, we can see him face to face in his kingdom. But God it would seem, could not just wait for that moment. Could not wait to share his life with us while on earth. And so the Lord Jesus, knowing on Monday, Thursday, he was going to die the following day. He gave us the Eucharist. This is my body, not like my body. This is my blood, which will be shared. So the sacrifice on Calvary. It's one and the same sacrifice as the Mass. The same. He wanted the effect, the power, the divine life to be with us until the end of time. And he said, do this in memory of me. Sublime sacrament. The one sacrament for which for every Catholic it has to be a binary choice. Just one or the other. The real presence, we believe it fully or we don't believe it. There is no middle ground. There is no point to say I believe less or more. It is the real presence, the body of Christ and his blood. God gives us his divine life. On the day he gave us the Eucharist, he also gave us a priesthood. If there is a sacrifice, there must be a priest to offer the sacrifice. There cannot be a sacrifice without a priest. So the very moment he gave us the Eucharist, the Last Supper, he established the priesthood. The priesthood. The priest called after Christ, who acts in the person of Christ, offers the sacrifice of the Mass. Through the sacrifice of the Mass, the Eucharist, we come to share in the life of God. It's an amazing thing. While on earth, he comes to us. He gives himself to us. What a sublime mystery that we participate here on earth in the life of God. While we await the beatific vision. The Eucharist makes the church. And so when the priest is called, he's called to offer the sacrifice of the mass, to give the life of the Lord to every one of us. Thomas Aquinas says, why is the priest called in Latin sacerdos? He says sacerdos because it means he's the one who bears, who bestows good things. And the good thing here is a divine life. And so today we celebrate the day the Lord gave us the Eucharist, but also the day he gave us the <coughs> priesthood. So it's the feast day of every priest. But the Lord did this within the context of humility and service and love as we heard in the gospel. 
He always loved them. He showed the depth of his love. He became the servant who washed their feet. To show the sense of immolation, total self-giving of service. The Eucharist is God who condescends to the point of giving himself to us that we become what he is. It's an amazing story. So we thank the Lord for this gift. It comes every one of us to the life of service. And we are proud that we have this faith which transforms everything. Here we receive him in the mystery of the sacrament so that at the end of our journey he will receive us into the eternal banquet of his kingdom. Here in this Eucharist we see the divine beauty veiled in the sacred species so that at the end of our journey we will see him in the beatific vision. Each time we receive the Eucharist, Christ himself, he gives us a pledge of future glory. He is the food for the journey, our viaticum. Each time we come forward, the Lord is saying, I give myself to you truly and really now. You share in my life. This is the pledge that at the end of your earthly journey, you will see glory. Let us therefore, with total submission and gratitude, worship the Lord in this most sublime sacrament. Amen. Amen. We invite forward those who have signed up for the washing of their feet as we demonstrate our faith in Christian charity, in service. During the washing of the feet, we will be singing hymn number 241. 241, Jeez you, Jeez you, fill us with your love. And you may sit <coughs> while you're singing. <coughs>
Sisters and brothers, like the apostles of old, we gather at the table of the Lord and learn the meaning of humble service. We pray for the church in every place that faith in Jesus in the Eucharist will sustain, nourish, and fill them with charity. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Pope Francis, that his Christ-like love of the poor will lead the Christian community to care for them as a fruit of their participation in the Eucharist. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the people of the Holy Land where Jesus first shared his body and blood with the disciples, that he may save everyone from hatred and violence of war and bring them peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our sick and housebound parishioners. We pray especially for those who have asked for our prayers at this time in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our departed loved ones and for all the faithfully departed that the Lord will grant them eternal rest and reward. Lord, in your mercy. To Mary, our mother, who intercedes for us, we pray together. Hail Mary. Mary, In a moment of silence, we offer our own prayers and petitions. Father, we pray for the community of the church and the clergy called to serve, that the Eucharist will be the source and centre of the Christian life of every Catholic. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. During the procession, we'll sing 643, Gifts of Bread and Wine. 643.
sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As we go and we are clay. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, 
John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless Acknowledge and approve the suffering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the memorial of the blessed passion the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your son our Lord we your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim this holy victim this spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant then, O Lord, we pray, an 
and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, <laughs> light, and peace. To us also your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you all. And good, thank you for thanking me. <laughs> yes, that's what Victor would say. Uh, so we have begun the sacred triduum, and uh, we're going to uh, have the procession and the transfer of the Blessed Sacrament uh, to the place uh, at the foot of the sanctuary, altar of repose. When Jesus uh, gave us the Eucharist Monday, Thursday, and after that, he and the disciples went uh, to the Mount of Olives, to the garden, uh, as you will see in some versions, where he began his passion. So the procession signifies that moment. We have celebrated the Eucharist as Jesus and disciples processed, moved to the garden where he began his own suffering. We're going to transfer the Blessed Sacrament and we have that procession, the priest alone will go through the center aisle around and come that way. We can all uh, kneel once the procession begins. And the disciples of the Lord were with him and the Lord said, stay with me. Uh, they could not stay one hour, but we will try to stay an hour. So after uh, the uh, transfer of the Blessed Sacrament, we will have a time, a quiet time to adore the Lord in the Eucharist. So we'll have an hour, stay as long as you want to stay, but we'll have an up to an hour. If you feel like staying for the hour, that will be fine. Thank you very much. And once again, thank you all for all your prayers. Thank you for being here. And we hope that this sacred triduum leading up to Easter will be a real, real graceful one for us. Thank you. Now sing Panjo Lingua Gloriosi 247, 247. And it's also in your uh, booklet.
Compassit laudasio. 